So, I start in my own context. My atelier is in the Bastille in Paris, the symbol for the French Revolution, and to me, a daily reminder that change is possible. The first place I want to take you is the, in the Normandy. It's uh, in Le Havre. It's the far, the lighthouse. And it's an identity I developed for a choreographic center. So sometimes the thing happens already in the name. The new director named the place the far, the lighthouse. And it was a smart statement about her way to see her own uh, place in the city. So immediately it was clear that uh, the light would be the conducting uh, thing through all the identity. Yes, it's moving. Yes. So all the different elements, the poster, the communication elements, were about the idea of light. From the opening poster to the other posters, and that gave it very easily this connection to the building, but also this idea about movement and dance. These were some posters, the brochures, and even the paper played with the idea of light and transparency. The festival posters I did were projected the light into the city in some way, and we here you can see some examples over several years. After we had installed this idea about light and type with light, they asked me to do also the facade, the front of their building. So they just said, maybe you could put this type also on the building so we would recognize us very easily. But that wasn't so simple. And I want to show this example because it's a two-way street, the way between the designer and the client. So this was the situation. The building was in this very um, not renovated area of Le Havre, where the docks, by the old docks, behind the train station where the big road comes into the city, and it was hidden behind this gas station. And this building on the right that you see here, that was pretty much uh, the building they had not very visible, and uh, I just said, the type on this building is not possible. We have to make it a real lighthouse. So I proposed them, instead of putting some type on it, putting color on it. So bringing a big red facade into this building. It was, they liked the idea very much, but they said, we don't have the budget, so we really can't do that. But in some way, they understood that there was a significance to it, uh, they changed really the whole, um, the whole local being. And uh, they were patient. They created their own little sign that you can upstairs light with light bubbles, the far, and tried to find the budget while we tried to figure out how we could work with the whole building, uh, bringing the light or shining the light out. In the beginning, I thought we could do it with projection but the projection wouldn't work, so we had to find a way to install a little LED system behind each glass brick and to create an application for that and all that. So we were ready technically, but we still didn't have the money. And then in the end of the year, the state finally saw that there was a transformative role in the neighborhood that would take place if they would put this building into life, and they gave us some money to do it. So we could uh, paint it in red, not all of it. Some was, you know, like patrimoine culturel, cultural patrimoine, but the rest was be able to be painted <coughs> here. And this is the way it, the bricks, the glass bricks would look like downstairs from the inside and from the outside. There was this idea that it had to be uh, transparent, that the daylight could come in. And then we had the opening night, and for the opening night, I made this poster while we were waiting that the day would come down to be able to see the projection. And uh, the projection is not, as I thought in the beginning, a live projection that we showed from the performances in the dance center, 
but it was a creation I made that was abstract and uh, parent and would stay there for now already two years. And you can see how that works at night now. It really has already changed the neighborhood. And uh, I think this is a beautiful example of how the interaction between the designer and the client uh, can create things when we trust each other. Here is the gas station now, it doesn't exist anymore. And this woman who worked there at the moment when we inaugurated the place said that how wonderful it was every night to have this performance and to have this live uh, uh, thing happening. I show you one minute out of uh, one hour, part of the animation here. So that's playing every night there. And it really worked out because now it became a local uh, recognizable um, architectural point in Le Havre. And then, first the light, the idea of the light, then the light coming out of the building itself, and then I took this photo from the light going through the brick glass, and it became a novel element in the print, printed work, and was integrated into the last poster. So it's a kind of multiplication of light. Now I would like to show you some of the theater work I did over the last uh, decade. And uh, I show you three different contexts and how the context that influenced the graphic design work. So sometimes it's a name, sometimes a place, sometimes a history or a photography. There's always something that triggers the way that you com communicate in a place. Angoulême is a city in southwestern France, and um, it is very well known nowadays for its comic book festival. Um, before, it was a city that was already known from the Roman Empire. And I went to work there uh, when the director was nominated to this new theater. And maybe this is a moment where I say, I'm working in a very small studio, mostly me and an assistant, but sometimes I collaborate with other designers. This is a project that is out of a long-term project over several years that I did together with Vincent Perrotet, who is also a designer in France. So the whole city is in some way uh, pays tribute to the idea of the comic book festival, and you can see it all over the city. Even in some way in the theater, you have the idea the windows are grids of some editorial uh, project. So this was also the trigger for the first year of communication, some kind of grid that could be used afterwards to very easily incorporate the communication and identify the different uh, art forms like dance, theater, music, etc. that would happen. It's a very simple grid that we could play around and these are monthly program posters, these are not play posters, so they have to show always a couple of different programs. Only the Rwanda one is uh, really um, a play poster. So we did that over a year, and after a year, the idea of playing around with the scripts was kind of done, and we thought it would be more interesting now to focus on the people in the city and to invite each year a photographer as an author with a carte blanche, he could do whatever he wanted, and bring us his point of view about the city. So this was Angoulême and the way that he saw, or the people he met, what he thought was interesting. So we didn't give him a brief or say, you know, we want you to work on that, it was the other way around. We said, go, go out and look what you see, what's interesting, 
And then there was always one of the photos that kind of triggered something, like this one. This is this corky guy who jumps from the bridge into the water with his little flower petals on it, and you don't know, you know if he jumps into a water or in the sky if you reframe it. And so different layers place it in some way into the location, and these graphic elements who become like a theater stage for graphic, put it into the space and allow to put the text in it. And then you can go further and put another layer to it and, you know, make it like that in some kind more profound. So every year we had this kind of uh, proposition from the photographers. The next year, the next one brought a lot of nature images. And so we played around this idea of nature <clears throat> until eventually one idea gets through. And I compare that always a little bit like chess playing between two designers. Once you get started, the other responds and so on, and then you just develop together the tune. And once the tune was found, like here for the Festival of Children, La Tête dans les Nuages means the head in the clouds. We really use the idea all over the season and create like that the identity of the communication of the place without needing to have to write a lot that it's the theater, you recognize it immediately. This was the children's program, same idea, easily declined. And so we went on another season, another year. Here it was all about reflection, mirroring, text, layers, three times the sec same text repeated. So it got very dense. This was a real critical point with the theater director, who until then was quite, uh, he was not uh, saying do whatever you want, but he considered us like partners in creation. So he said the design part for me is as much as creation as the stage part. You are actors, visual actors in the city, and it's about the idea um, that we bring out a sign into the public space and the language and the way how to address people and not necessarily only to inform because probably uh, besides some stars nobody goes to the theater who doesn't want to go there but it's about a presence in the city and also a way to say you know this is the way that we want to address you and and uh, well this is how we do it only there there was a problem it became uh, even for him too much, and he said, no, that's not possible anymore, that's not communication, that's art, and he didn't pay us for that. We printed it anyway. Now it's one of his favorite. But by discussing all these points, what really matters in public space about communication, and so we decided, we lowered it a little bit down, we made it more readable. In the end, it's just the months, a couple of plays, and the identity of the theater. So that's happened, and in the end, it got a little bit wilder again. Next year, next photographer, black and white portraits. This guy, this pantomime, was a very interesting trigger again. It created the idea to create these masks around the face where we could place the text in. And, you know, this, I also like the idea that there are different kinds of reading. So once a first reading, was there, like these masks. A second took place with another distance, and it could become an alphabet. As I just mentioned before, as good work comes out of mutual respect and trust, and that often happens when you are a good team. It's like when you make films or whatever. Good clients and good designers work together, and often good work develops in long-term relationships. So when the director was promoted to a much bigger place, La Filature, who is close in Moulins, close to the Swiss-German um, uh, frontier in France, he asked us to come with him to this big building, where it was a much bigger place, so there's a theater in it, a cinema, an orchestra, and he asked us to 
work on this place. It's named La Filature, the spinnery, and you can see the building already itself has something like, uh, you know, this woven thing about uh, the windows and the structure, the metal structure in it. So the first thing we did was to weave images into the facade and to show that way that something like living art was happening here. And I saw that because that was our whole uh, play through these different seasons that I'm going to click through now, the idea was this interwovenness between different uh, disciplines, you know, that happened there, photography, dance, uh, theater, but also text uh, and uh, print and all this. The idea is there was, again, no logo. In the beginning, we had a little temptation of a logo, but the real identity really happened through the idea of interwovenness, who could very freely be interpreted over the years. And they all looked very different, but they all looked like family in some way. Another theater um, that I want to close with, it's Relax, it's a much uh, smaller theater in the city in Chaumont. Some people know the festival there, a graphic festival. Now in one month it will have a museum for graphic design. And there the situation was completely different. An old bowling place was transformed into a theater. On the uh, construction site, we found this uh, little, uh, this old signage, which was very interesting. I thought, why should we invent something new? Relax for a theater is great. We just reinvent that in many different forms and give it new life. This is what we did. And we never used the same logo twice to communicate. And as we, as designers, um, were the guarantors for the identity, there was no need to create a corporate chart or something like that. It was just, we could torture this logo as much as we wanted. We were the fathers and mothers of it, so in that way it was very easy. We had the local photographer as a complice in this work who very well identified the local places where it, something interesting was going to happen, like in the, you know, in the train station, in the marketplace, you know, the streets that are the most used, and we placed the communication directly into this place. The idea of that was that in the beginning, before we started this communication, there was a lot of uh, resistance against the theater and the people like here, the commercials, or what we just said, the group of the sportsmen were very much against. They thought the theater was too much luxury, and a bigger football blue, uh, club would have been much uh, more interesting for the city. This is one of my favorite seasons, where we included all the professions and actors of the city life that never stand in public light and uh, put the spotlight on them for a short while. And it was very beautiful to watch how that had an impact on people and how that interacted also with the theater. So the photographer who did that even was able to talk the local teacher into the bath tube. And then he was so tired that he had this siesta selfie and we made this photo for him, this poster for him. It, what was interesting with this communication was that it created uh, immediate connection and it was only possible in a small city like Chaumont with 25,000 inhabitants. It couldn't have been possible in Paris, in Angoulême, in Filature. There, the really important element is that people would recognize each other and say, we stand for the theater. And uh, that was really the interesting part of it. Last year, before the director left, we showed the people who worked behind the scenes. And then a new director arrived who loved very much literature and circus. So the circus and the city life mixed together in the public space. And I ask you to be aware of the effort of the photographer to place the car in the same color matching to the poster here again. So it became this uh, interaction between the city life and 
the uh, post alive. It was, um, so the theater is in the city, is in life, and the life is in theater, and it's all in the poster. And I finished my talk with a poster that I made for Paris last year for the graphic festival with the team celebrating the Earth. It was in the bus stops for a month all around Paris. And I quoted a citation from Edgar Morin. Not only am I a small part of everything, but everything is inside me. Come, Samita. <laughs>